Okay, so here I am in natural lighting. The sound may be a little bit echoey because I had to film in my kitchen because that's the only place I can get natural lighting. So I'm going to take you through skin prep all the way to um, the makeup, basically. I'm zoomed in as much as I can so you can see everything just so we can get an idea of, you know, products and the face with some natural light. I'm also going to be answering some questions throughout this as well. That was on Q&A about makeup just as a little chat chat session, really. So let's talk skin prep. We all know that prepping the skin for makeup is the most important part of a makeup routine. If your skin isn't prepped correctly underneath, it's not gonna be a good look. So I am absolutely honored, I think is the word, that today's video is sponsored by Dauber, an incredible, incredible skincare brand. If you want prepped, glowing skin, listen up. Dauber is an incredible skincare brand. I use them a lot personally myself. Their signature ingredient is white truffle. Luxury. It's a natural antioxidant. We love antioxidants. A luxury antioxidant, I should say. And the glow of these products gives your skin and the way it makes your skin feel afterwards is, is divine. It is beautiful. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. So they have very kindly sent over their first spray serum. This is incredible. They actually sent me a new one. This is my regular one. It's, it's pretty used up. And this, of course, has that white truffle ingredient that's gonna leave your skin with a beautiful glow. If you're oily, this is gonna be a game changer for you. It has ingredients that hydrate. It has ingredients that soothe the skin but it's not gonna be over hydrating for under your makeup. We also have the double serum and cream. I adore this product because of how customizable it is to your skin type. And you do get that white truffle glow with this product too, of course. So the serum side is lightweight, gives instant hydration. And then we have a cream on the other side, which provides the skin with nutrition, with elasticity, and with a more rich and extra moisture. Let me show you exactly how I use these products. I have very oily skin, but I'm also very dehydrated hydrated. So a lot of oils come out my skin, but then in some areas I have the texture of a more of a drier skin also. So the first spray serum is a first step for me. We do have to give it a gentle shake and that's going to combine the oils, the plant derived oils at the top with the white truffle serum underneath. And then it's as easy as spraying onto your face. And you're not going to want to stop because it smells amazing. Don't forget the neck. We do so much makeup on our faces, but I feel like we always forget our neck. It's nice to have a glowing neck, you know? And then you can just let it dry down, which I've just done, and look. Look at that glow already on the skin. I would be more than happy to leave a house with my face like this right now. And it just feels like, I'm like, yeah, that's, I could go on top with makeup right now, but we are gonna go on with the cream. But well, we are gonna go in with the white truffle double cream and serum. Now, this is really, really incredible. Dauba do kind of have a guide that you can use in terms of what kind of skin you have, whether it's oily, dry combination. I'm a little bit more oily, which I keep saying. So I'm gonna take two very small scoops of the serum. Hold that on the back of my hand. Boop and one scoop of the cream itself. And I do have to say the cream is quite, is a lot more rich, a lot more moisturizing, but it's not over, over, over thick or sticky in any way. Then go ahead. You can see how easily, oh, it smells so good. You can see how easily that just is absorbed into the skin. And I just love a product like this. I mean, if you're really not feeling the cream, you can literally just go in with the serum and have that be your moisture for the day. Look at that beautiful, beautiful glow. Now, speaking from experience with these products also, the spray you can use throughout your makeup routine and afterwards also, but it does, the glow does show through your makeup. So again, if you're someone who loves the glow to their skin, perhaps your skin is quite dry and it doesn't tend to have a nice glow to it, or your skin is oily and all the products that give you a glow are maybe too greasy and heavy, these products are perfect to use for those results. I adore these products and we'll be coming back to the spray again later on in this. I'll leave where you can get them down below in the description box for you. And thank you again to Dalva for sponsoring this video. Let's get into my eyebrows. So we're using Soap Brows West Barn Co. This is the extra hold one. And I wanted to use this one in natural light because a lot of people say it gives them like a white um, dusty brow, but I think they might just be using it incorrectly. I sprayed a tiny bit of water in here and I'm gonna roll and rub my um, brow comb spoolie in at the same time. And then I'm gonna start by going backwards on my brow, almost like I'm back combing <laughs> my eyebrow. So whatever direction your hairs grow in, you go against it. And the key point here is to roll through the brow 
to get all that product in and then come into place again. Then you have to flatten. This is the same with a lot of brow waxes and a lot of um, brow gels. You have to use the warmth of your finger, press and solidify. It's almost like the way to set it. Okay, I want to start answering a few questions and I found this one quite interesting, interesting, interesting. And they were basically asking my opinion on tubing mascara because a lot of people will say loads of good things about it, but they also find it quite messy when it comes to removal. Tubing mascara is incredible because it literally does that. It forms a tube around your eyelashes. So if you have trouble with, um, say your eyelashes keeping their curl after you've curled them with a, a curling wand, curling wand? Curl, eyelash curler and your lashes tend to just flop down tubing mascaras are great because they almost like imprison your lashes in a tube in a coating of that of that mascara so they're a really good one to go for and i think it's quite gimmicky not gimmicky because it does work but one gimmick that people use to sell it yeah you can just pick it off or just wash it off with water and it's like, yeah, but why would you want to pick at your lashes? Um, but that's quite easy for people to remove their mascara, right? Because removing mascara, let's be honest, it's a bit of a, a boring task and it does take a little while. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't remove any, any mascara with just water or just peeling it off or picking it off my eyelids. I would 100% or just with water. I would always 100% recommend using a cleansing balm or a makeup removing oil always even if a product isn't like waterproof I just think it's so much more gentle it gets rid of every single last drop of that makeup and you know how mascara can hang around sometimes right and even lash glue so tubing mascaras are good but do remove it any other way you would use any other mascara I want to do something a bit more natural and smoky today so we're going in with the Huda Beauty creamy palette these are new I have had a little dig around in there so do excuse um, but yeah, we'll just create something gray tone with a little bit of um, a definition on the outside corner. Do you think you can be too mature slash old skin wise for a smoked out bottom lash line? No, I don't. I don't, I don't think that at all. I think we, um, the days of makeup age rules, I call them, where it's like, oh, you're over however, however age, whatever age don't use glitter, don't use the color blue. It's like, okay, that's that's old fashioned. Telling people what they can and can't do in terms of color, because it was never like, um, it's never an issue with texture, shimmer, smoked out bottom lines are never an issue with texture. I think it was just a case of like, oh, you're at an age now and that isn't how you should be behaving at that age. You know what I mean? It never looks bad on people of a certain age of smoked out bottom, um, lash line i actually love it those i always used to have like clients and they'll be like oh um i don't want any eye makeup underneath the eye and i'll be like what <laughs> what do you mean like yeah i just don't i don't want it too dark yeah but it, it makes it look amazing like on everyone and then i'll try and convince them and i'll be like you know we'll try it and then we can take it away if you don't like it and then and then we always stuck with it so i always i always won that one but i just wanted to show them you know that when it's done in a certain way it suits everyone, it doesn't matter what age you are. Like a lot of things in makeup, I think those those kind of rules of age are completely old fashioned, completely old fashioned. And a lot there's a lot of makeup artists out there online who, you know, do makeup on um, every age client and you can see they can, their faces can handle the most complex or the most smokiest or the most colorful eye looks, everyone can do it. There's no age limit, no age limit at all. Look at my skin, look how glowy it is. And it's not greasy in any way, it's not grease. It's like a beautiful, beautiful glow. I just love it, I love it so much. I'm so happy when they, off the record, when Dalva reached out and was like, do you want to work together? I was like, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was like being chosen by the popular kid in school to be on their team for like a sport, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with this pink up here. Actually, I'm gonna go with a flat brush and just set and um, put it on my lid. So <laughs> this question says, why does every lipstick look bad on me? I, I, this, this is a good question. And I know it sounds really terrible, but there's some lipsticks, right? There's a lipstick out there for everyone. I don't believe it when people say, red doesn't suit me. This color doesn't suit me. I'm like, yes, it does. You just haven't found the right one and you're not considering your undertone, not just your skin's undertone, but your lips undertone too. Some of us have very, well not me really, but a lot of people have very pink, pink, pink lips. And sometimes that can almost ruin the lipstick shade. Um, or we can just have very 
very, a very strange understanding. People have bluey tones in their lips and that can ruin a lipstick shade. So it's all about, first of all, finding the right undertone for you in terms of skin tone. Because even nudes have undertones. Even nudes can be peach, nudes can be pink. A nude can be quite neutral. So it's about finding that, but then also priming your lips beforehand. And I mean prime as in um, blanking them out almost. So the best thing to do is find a lip liner that's just flesh, like flat out nude, right? Completely wash out your lip color with a lip liner. And you can get lip liners now that have things like hyaluronic acid in that are more comfortable and a little bit more hydrating on the lip. I'm just gonna go in with a black in this bottom corner. And it will give you a really, really nice, comfortable feeling. But take that lip pencil and literally apply it how you would a lip, lip liner, but also a lipstick. Just cover the whole lip so you have like early 2000s foundation lips, right? That's gonna set a really good nude base for your lipstick, but it's also neutralized the color of your lip. So the lipstick is gonna come out true to the color that you see in the bullet, lipstick bullet, or the color you've seen in store, you know what I mean? Because sometimes I think, you know, we look at a lipstick color and we try it on and because we haven't considered the tone that's in our own lips, we're like, oh, that's not the color. <laughs> that's not what it looks like. These eyeshadows are beautiful, by the way. They just, I literally just blended that together with my finger, that seam on my eyelid. So this question says, I struggle a lot to know the right blush shade because of my rosacea. Any tips would be good. Yeah, this is a very common one. And this is for anyone who even just gets like um, really rosy cheeks, perhaps when you drink or just in everyday life. Oh no. Oof. A peach shade, a peach shade it suits everyone, right? On deeper skin tones, it gives you a really beautiful like glow to the skin. On skin tones that tend to get really, really red, there's stuff, if you think about peach, peach has like the undertone of yellow, but also pink. So it's a great like neutralizing blush in a strange way. So it's, it's really good if say your cheeks get almost that bluey, kind of tone when you get really cold. And a peach is just, just works really well. So you can get a peachy tone um, blush. And it doesn't have to be pure orange peach. It can be, that works great too. But like a pe it can be a peachy pink, it can be a peachy red, it can be a peachy peach, a peachy nude, you know what I mean? So something like that is really good at almost color correcting and neutralizing without going through the whole color correcting thing. I said this um, recently in a, um, an Instagram reel, remember every shade that you're using, every color you are using on your skin has an undertone to it. Someone asked what brand I think is the best in general, and that's a really difficult one to answer because different brands do different things better than each other. You know what I mean? So there isn't one brand that I think make everything amazing like I could have you know a favorite highlighter from one brand but then the the brand that do my favorite foundation don't make my favorite highlighter you know what I mean so I think that's a really difficult one to answer one brand that I think don't have anything that's super terrible let's say would be someone like house labs a brand like house labs I don't I'm not a fan of their concealer but it also wasn't the worst concealer I've ever used. Their foundation is great and I've enjoyed using all their other products. So if I had to say that if there's one brand to go for, House Labs would probably be the one. And look, you can still see the glow underneath. See you guys. I'm going in with my Bare Cheeks palette from Blend Bunny. This is so stunning. What are your makeup trend predictions for 2025? Good question. I still, I still think ear makeup. There's, there's been, I've seen it a little bit online recently and I saw it in 2000 and whatever the year was before this one, last year, where people were kind of incorporating designs onto their ears. And it could be things like, you know, how people do like nail art <laughs> on, on nails, but it was on the ears. I think it looks really cool. And I think it's a kind of area we haven't really um, delved, di delved, dove into yet but i do think it's an extension of of what people are doing creatively i'm using this highlighter from flower nose i think we're in this um phase in makeup where nothing is truly outrageous anymore and i think it, being able to try everything give everything a go you won't get looked at as weird for it you know what i mean this is from this lip product is lily by red and i can't remember the shade oh kaya jelly bite number six 
I'm gonna use a little bit of a Huda Beauty um, Cherry Blossom Cake Easy Bake Powder. It says Easy Bake, but you know me, we're not baking. This is one thing that I think is gonna go out of, out of style is baking. I think that over excess powder situation is like over, overdue leaving this world. I'm tapping excess off on the back of my hand because I can come back and get the excess. And I'm not even, I'm not leaving powder on my face. I'm not letting it sit. I'm literally gonna tap it into what's already there and make sure it's completely tapped in. Part of my makeup. I don't want it sitting on top of my makeup. Going back in with our Dauber First Serum Spray and I'm gonna do this before um, mascara. Okay, so I'm gonna do some mascara and some lashes and then we will be done. Okay, so this is the finish look in natural lighting. Um, yes, I I really like it. I love all the products we use today. I think that's why I bought them down. But I cannot emphasize enough the importance of a good, good base. A lot of your makeup problems, a lot of your makeup concerns can be fixed just by having a good base. And sometimes it means not over preparing your skin with too, too much stuff. A good serum spray, a good serum or cream is sometimes just as much as you need. So thanks again to Dow before sponsoring this video. I'm gonna leave those products linked down below in the description box for you to check them out. I cannot recommend them enough. I am looking into your soul <laughs> and telling you how incredible these products are. Um, and as I said, honored to work with them. I think they are absolutely incredible. Thanks again for joining me. Give this video a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.